Hi, I'm Gary. Welcome to my shop. In this video, I'm going to show you how I make this brass bell from a PSI kit. This is a very easy kit to do. Stay tuned and we'll show you how we do this. Okay, this bell kit comes uh, in this bubble wrap bag like this. The part number on it is uh, PKBELLG. And what comes in this package is the bell, clapper, a union that gets pressed into this brass tube, fashion a handle out of uh, wood here for the tube, and then this clapper will screw into that union. Then on the very end is a cap that goes into the end of the, for the handle. Also it comes with instructions for assembly and turning. Next step I'll do is uh, I picked out this piece of olive wood here, it's left over. Yeah, it's a one inch square, so that'll be good for giving me a good size handle. And so the next step will be to go and cut this to length to match up with the brass tube. Then I'll drill a seven millimeter hole through it for the brass tube to get glued into. Then I can go to the lathe and turn it to shape. Okay, I'm gonna prepare this blank mark for the length of the tube. Mark that with a pencil. Kind of square that off with the square here. Then I can go over the bandsaw and cut off the excess. Okay, I've got this blank cut to length to fit the tube. What I need to do now is go to the drill press, drill that seven millimeter hole through the blank here to fit the tube into. So I need a seven millimeter bit. Since I'm doing wood, I'm using a brad point bit. My normal seven millimeter bit is a bit too short to get it chucked up and to get all the way through there. Luckily, I do happen to have on hand a longer seven millimeter bit. Must have been from some project where I bought this extra length. So it's a caveat if you're planning on doing some things that need longer handles and a seven millimeter bit. You want to make sure your drill bits are going to be long enough so you can get through your work. What I will do next here is to mark the center of my piece for drilling using my block squid. Did a short video on this uh, previously. I'll put a link in the description below. That gives me center punch so I can guide my drill bit. I've got my piece mounted into my vertical drilling jig. I did a video on this one before too, and I'll put a link to that in the description below also. I'll drill through this, and then I'll insert the tube and then square up the ends. So it goes slow and easy here because you don't want to overheat things and overheat your bit or overheat the wood too much. <laughs> Kind of smell it, so I'm yeah, that's getting hot, so it needs some time to cool. Well, it takes about three minutes to cool down. Okay, it's cooled down, we'll continue on here. Oh, I felt it go through. Uh, should be good. Got her all the way through. A little bit off there a little bit, so I'll have to remember to make this piece towards the business end and this end towards the other end of the bell. So this will be the fatter end of the handle. I'll make this the thinner end of the handle since that's off a little bit. Now I'm going to glue the brass tube into this piece that I just drilled. And I've got my little setup here. I've got my tube insertion tool. I put the tube on and I use that for inserting it in there with the glue on it. Usually I'll clean this up a little bit with some about 220 grit sandpaper. Don't have to sand it a lot, just a little bit, just to roughen it up a little bit to get off any corrosion that may have accumulated over time. Then I use a medium CA glue and I'll put like two strips onto this brass tube and then insert it into the block here. A good idea is to have some paper towels handy, another piece handy to wipe up any drips. Sometimes I have to poke the end of my tube or my glue bottle here with a small pin just to get that uh, flow good. And I usually do two strips on here for a seven millimeter. Some of the larger ones I may do three strips for it. And then I insert it in in a twisting motion. Get it in there, make sure the end is good and flush. So I've got something to trim, and that looks like it's in there very good. So we'll let this dry for about five to 10 minutes. Then I can go back over to the drill press and use my barrel trimmer to trim the ends of these to be flush with the brass tube. 
Okay, I've got my work paste mounted up in here with the brass tube glued in. And I've got my 7 millimeter barrel trimmer in here. I got it centered up to get the ends squared up the brass tube. I go just enough till I see the shiny end of the brass tube showing and then I know I'm down there enough Then I can just flip it around and I'll have to realign this since the other hole is a little bit off. Okay, get this realigned and I'll continue on and square up this end. Okay, that's done. Got the shiny ends of the brass, so I know I'm squared up. Next step will be going to the lathe. Okay, what I have mounted here is my 7mm pen mandrel. And the bushings for turning this handle for this bell requires the PK Mont BU bushings. I use the upper bushing first, which is the larger of the three. And then put the body on here that I'm going to turn. And it's like I said before, this one that's off center here a little bit, I'm putting on first because that's going to be my narrowest end. And then this one that's better centered will be the wider end of my handle. So that goes on. Then the center bushing goes on and it has a slight step between these two ends of this bushing. The larger size step goes on towards the end of the workpiece here. Then I'll bring up my tailstock. Tighten that down to the bed, tighten the quill just a little bit, just like that, and I'm ready to start going. Other than bringing my tool rest, or banjo, up into place, and then adjusting my height with my lathe chisel here. Like I said in other videos, I try to get this kind of perpendicular here with my lathe chisel when it's sitting on the rest here horizontally. I like to start out at about three or 4,000 RPM and then get it shaped, get it to a round, and then I'll start shaping it more. Yeah, I've got it to a pretty good round right here. So I'm gonna start shaping it. Okay, so got a pretty good shape there, I think, and now it's just to uh, do the, some sanding and get it good and smooth, and then next time with the finishing. Now with the sanding, I start out with about a 150 grit and go down to about a 600 grit. And with the sanding, I'm going to slow it down to about 2,000 RPM. In between grits, I like to go across like this to erase some of the circular sanding marks. Down to the last grit. Ah, it's looking pretty good. Now I'll put on some finish, and what I'm using is this Aussie oil. If you can see that. And this goes on, gives a really good hard protective finish. Just put on a couple of drops on a rag, reduce the RPM all the way down, and then I give it about one minute that I rub it in. And the heat from this friction helps it to cure. And I'll do three coats of this. Okay, I'll let that dry a little bit. Now clean it up a little bit with some steel wool, then do a couple more coats. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it and you got something out of it and the inspiration to make something of your own, please give me a like. Also share with your family and friends. If you want to see what I may come up with in the future, please subscribe. Thank you.